to you, my darling. And now, for you, my love. Robert, you're wonderful. And now, to match your beauty. Small bouquet. But how? How did you do it? I didn't know you were a magician. Didn't you? I am the world's greatest magician. The only real magician left. <laughs> You're wonderful. Watch this. Nothing up my sleeves. Hmm? Now what will Mamzo have? A rabbit? A cat? A bird? A bird? Could you do a bird? Watch closely. Closely. <gasps> oh, you should be on stage. Perhaps this will entertain you. Now watch closely. Closely. Diamonds. Are they real? The real magic is yet to come. The most stupendous trick of all. You want it, Marie? Oh, yes, Robert. Yes. Then I must put it on you. Now look into my eyes. Look deeply. Deeply. You cannot move, my love. You cannot make a sound. Now look deeply and you shall see the ultimate magic. Life warm and pulsating. Life transformed into death. Suddenly, and without regard for the plain, the beautiful, the bad, or the good. But when the hand of death is controlled by a force of evil, the consequences can defy belief. Our story tonight concerns just such a force, and it features a most unusual star, this mirror. In it, you will see our players caught in strange reflection. Mr. Lloyd Bockner, Miss Marion Ross, Mr. Jack Mulaney, Miss Pat Michaud, and Mr. Henry Daniel. So be prepared to gaze through a glass darkly. Uh, but don't. Please don't stand too close. I should hate to see this happen to any of you. What is it, mother? 
There's some men downstairs. They want to speak to you. Who are they? The police. They have a warrant for your arrest. They say you killed a girl tonight. Mary Blanchard. No, they're wrong, Mother. I never killed anybody. I know. It's all a horrible mistake. Mother, I swear to you I'm innocent. <laughs> but I could never prove it. They'd only laugh at me or... or send me to the guillotine. No. No. Oh, Robert, what are we going to do? I don't know. I don't know. This way is better. <laughs> Young Robert was no murderer, nor was he mad, as he may have seemed. He was a victim of one of the most diabolical practitioners of black magic ever known, Count Alexander Cagliostro. Only a legend, you say? Well, perhaps. But that's for you to decide. Now we resume our tale more than half a century later. Forget him. Forget your research. Erase the name of Cagliostro from your memory. I understand that you wrote a thesis on Cagliostro yourself. That's why I came to see you. I did. Then I destroyed it. Burned it. Forgot it. There are some things the world will not accept. The truth about Count Alexander Cagliostro is one of them. But this man has been dead for nearly 200 years. Monsieur Langham, evil never dies. Come in. Excuse me, sir, but your secretary took... Harry, I've been looking for you. Uh, Professor Thibault, may I present my friend, Fred Forrest? How do you do, sir? Pleasure. Fred has been acting as my research assistant this summer. Yes, and I must have been out of my mind. I thought Paris. You know, M Montmartre, uh, the, the, the left bank, the Follies Berger. Instead, the only thing I've seen has been the inside of dusty libraries and even dustier furniture stores. A scholar's life is sometimes a dusty one, Monsieur Forrest. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Harry, don't forget, the boat train leaves at seven. Yes, yes. Fred thinks of me as being the typical absent-minded professor. Mm. Uh, yes. Well, I've got to start packing. Harry, don't stall around too long, huh? Right. Oh, it's very nice meeting you, sir. My pleasure. The enthusiasm of young Americans is refreshing, but somewhat overwhelming. <laughs> yes. Professor Thibault, um... In the archives at Harvard, I found an original letter that referred to a mirror, a, a large pier glass that Cagliostro evidently placed great store by. After his death, it was acquired by the Marquis de Chantenay, and then was either lost or sold somewhere around about 1910. On a whim, I've been spending my spare time searching through antique shops for it, but it's like the proverbial needle in a haystack. No doubt. Uh, but if by chance it still exists, there would be a record of it at Armand's. Every uh, antique that has been bought or sold or pawned or stolen in Paris has at one time passed through Armand's hands. But can I not persuade you to abandon your search for knowledge of Cagliostro? Oh, I'm afraid not. Then perhaps I can show you something that will change your mind. And what's that? I will take you to the church of Saint Martin and show you the tomb of Yvette Dulaine. Yvette Dulaine. Yvette Dulaine, a favorite at the court of Louis XVI. Her acquaintance with Cagliostro led to a strange and terrible fate. it unmarked, Professor. There's only the date here. When she was buried, the good fathers thought it best she'd be forgotten by the world. Why? What's the mystery? How did she die? My friend, the question must be asked, did she die at all? 
Did she die? <laughs> I don't understand. You shall see, mademoiselle, for yourself. Exactly as you see her since the year 1780. Oh, that's impossible. Yvette Dulaine was one of Cagliostro's victims. He desired her, and she repulsed him. One day they found her like this, not breathing, her heart not beating. A week passed, a month. She remained in this death-like state. Oh, I, I just can't believe it. It's true. What's, what's the explanation, Professor? It lies hidden deep in Count Cagliostro's grave, and it will never be found. I beg you, my friend, go home now and forget his very name. No, we must leave her to her unnatural sleep. Uh, 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 wait. Let me look at her once more. All right. Close it now. Monsieur Amo? I am. How do you do? I'm interested in a mirror. Uh, I have many mirrors, monsieur. <laughs> yes, of course. The, the one I'm interested in once belonged to the Marquis de Chantonnay. The mirrors are this way. one who might interest you. It's covered with paint. Oh, the paint could be removed if you wish to make sure there is good glass underneath. Pardon, monsieur, a customer. Mm. You know that this thing cost him a month's salary, and that doesn't include the packing and the shipping. Well, I can't quite see its great attraction. How does he know it was Cagliostro's mirror? I don't know. He just said it was, that's all. Why is it painted over? Don't ask me. I just live here. You know, Harry's been in orbit ever since we've left Paris. 
My dear sister, would you marry him and settle him down? This Cagliostro was a real oddball, and I think some of it's rubbing off on Harry. On Harry? Hi, darling. Oh, good. They got it here at last. Ten minutes ago. You must have greased the wheels. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I spent practically the whole day down at the pier trying to get some action. Okay, would you... Let's get upstairs, Fred. I think you and I can handle it if we're careful. Oh, yeah. We wouldn't want to crack old Cagliostro. I'll go up and make room for it. Uh, they sure made these things heavy. There's not a crack in it, though. <laughs> Maybe they made unbreakable glass, huh? Ah. <laughs> uh, well, I've got to be running. I'll see you tonight at dinner. Don't be late. I'm having something special. I thought we'd celebrate your return. Oh, I was just going to stay up here. Oh, Harry. I, I wanted to arrange my notes. I guess that could wait. Since you got back yesterday, we've hardly been together at all. Well, I can fix that right now. Well, that was better, I think. Now I'd better get down to that kitchen. Dinner at seven. All right, I'll see you then. wrong? Wrong? Nothing. Another girl? <laughs> I didn't even look at one. Not even in Paris. You're sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I... Happy days. There is something. Now, what makes you think that? Oh, look, darling, I don't expect you to be Casanova, but the last two days have been ridiculous. 
All right, Case, something did happen. I don't know how to tell you. It's so unbelievable, I don't know where to begin. Begin at the beginning. Well, I went to see a Professor Thibault. He wrote a thesis on Cagliostro himself. And he took me to an old church, and he showed me the tomb of a girl named Yvette Dulaine. She died way back in 1780. And yet... What, Harry? Well, as she lay there, she was so beautiful. She was dead, and yet she seemed to be alive. OK, I'll tell you about it some other time. If you'll excuse me, I'd go to my room, get some rest. I'll see you tomorrow. Harry. I see you. If I could only see you again. to speak. Must be something. There has to be something. Harry, Harry, may I speak with you? Harry. Yeah, uh, j just now. Yes, Kay. What is it? Well, I was worried about you. I thought perhaps there was something that oh, I, I could do to help fine, you. Fine, really. It's just that I'm very tired. Of course. I'm sorry that I disturbed you. I'll leave you alone. Kay. Wait a minute. Yes. What is it, Harry? This is so utterly fantastic. Take a look in that mirror. Don't you see her? I see me. Kay Forrest. She's gone. You scared her away. Scared her away? Kay, what are you I'd talking like to be about? alone, please. Oh, leave me alone, please. All right, Harry. I won't bother you again. Good evening, monsieur. Who are you? 
Another victim of Cagliostro. Where is Yvette? She is here. She will return in a moment. We are both, alas, prisoners within the mirror of that infamous magician, Count Alexander Cagliostro. We exist in a dark dimension that is neither life nor death. But we are real. And you can help us to escape. Tell me how. I will tell you. Yvette, a candle, if you please. It will be necessary to repeat one of Cagliostro's spells. It will take time. If you will be seated, we will begin. in the world of the mirror. Come. spirit is with us in the room of the mirror a room that ceased to exist a hundred years ago but I am sitting in my chair <laughs> am I asleep am I dreaming all this no your body is only an empty husk awaiting the return of the spirit you are truly with us with mademoiselle Yvette Dulaine and myself you came to aid us to escape. How can I help you? Tell me what to do. You have already done it. What do you mean? By entering here, you left waiting for me. A body that is unoccupied. I go to take possession of it. Au revoir, monsieur. No, I, I don't understand. A thousand thanks, monsieur. It is 50 years since I last left the world of the mirror. I am hungry for the taste of life again.
it's good to be alive again. With a young body. <sighs> a strong body. If you will excuse me. The night is young. And I'm eager for the pleasures of life. Good night. Miss Haffrey, I just went out that door. Yet I, I'm in here with you. Your spirit is here, monsieur, as he said. But in coming here, you have made it possible for him to leave. Now his spirit is free. And he has taken your body for his own evil purposes. Who is he? Count Alexander Cagliostro. Yes, monsieur. You have released the evil of Cagliostro once more upon the world. See why we had to leave. I liked it in there. I know something that'll be even more fun. Well, if you say so, then I guess I don't mind. What'd you say your name was? I didn't say. But it's Laura. Laura. In French, that would be Laurette. Are you French? Well, let's say my spirit is French. And because it's French, that flower disgusts me. Hey, what are you doing? It's a cheap imitation. Let, let me give you something that's real. Hmm? Yeah. It is real. Hmm. How did you do that? You're wonderful, like a magician. I am a magician. What would you say if I told you that I was the greatest magician who ever lived? Oh, you talk crazy, like some of those college boys. But I like you. Do you like me? I like you better without those. Oh, please. They're cheap and vulgar. Your loveliness should be unadorned. Oh, well, if you think so. Let's go for a walk by the water. Watch the moonlight. Or we can be alone. Okay. I'm game. <sighs> Good morning, Monsieur Langham. No, it's afternoon. Hmm? Yes, I, I slept very well, thank you. But then I, I found last night so very entertaining. You know, there are places in this new world as deliciously wicked as any in old Paris. Yeah. Harry, it's Kay. Oh, uh, just a moment. There's a man downstairs to see you. He says he's a detective. A detective? That's odd. Well, I'll, I'll be down in a minute. Okay. Perhaps I'd, I'd better see him privately. But when I'm finished, I'd like to apologize for the way I acted last night. Of course, darling.
What a charming girl. And you've treated her so badly. Well, I shall try to make up to her for your bad conduct. Now, if you'll excuse me, it seems that I have an engagement with a gendarme. You won't go away, will you? Good afternoon. You wanted to see me? Professor Langham? Well, assistant professor only, I'm afraid. Uh, Sergeant Burke, homicide. Homes. Well, do come in and sit down. Where were you at three this morning? Three this morning. Yes, I was. Uh, I was upstairs working on my thesis. It's on Count Alexander Kolyostro. He's a great fraud, I'm afraid. Now, the officer on this beat saw you enter the house at about four fifteen a.m. He's well acquainted with you. What about it, Professor? Yes, yes, that's perfectly true. Having worked so late, I. Uh, Felt the need of some fresh air. So about four, I went out and walked for 15 minutes. And you weren't at the fishnet bar last night? The fishnet bar? I don't believe I've even heard of it. And maybe you haven't read the morning papers. No, I very seldom read the papers. My period is the 18th century. Now take a look at this. Hmm? Maybe it'll interest you to know you fit the description of the killer. Oh, well, I'm sure there must be, what, 20,000 men in this city who look something like me. Now, the dead woman was a waterfront girl named Laura. At 3 a.m., she was seen leaving the fishnet bar with a man that one of your students thought was you. One of my students in a waterfront bar at 3 a.m.? Well, it's no wonder they learn so little. Uh, academically speaking, that is. Now, let me tell you something else, Sergeant. Based on their classwork, the powers of recognition and description of most of my students are limited at very best. Well, I'll admit, uh, I couldn't see you as our man, Professor. I'm sorry I bothered you. Oh, not at all. I'm sorry I couldn't be of more help. Goodbye, Professor. Goodbye, Sergeant. Harry? What do you want, darling? Oh, it was nothing. Wrong man. Oh. My, don't you look lovely. Well, you didn't seem to think so last night. Last night? <laughs> Today, I am a different man. You uh, do seem different. Yes, you'd be surprised if you knew how much. <laughs> I've just been working too hard, that's all. That fraud, Kaliostro. I'm going to forget about him. But your thesis. I have a far better idea. And one of them is for tonight. Tonight? Mm -hmm. Dinner, dancing, you and I. Oh, Harry, that sounds wonderful. Darling, it will be wonderful. Perhaps, my friend, you'd, you'd like to see the morning paper. Hmm? It's so dangerous to be a pretty girl. Well, let, let's talk about something pleasanter, shall we? Your fiance, Kay, she's most attractive. Do you know something, my friend? You really are a bore. A crashing bore. But Kay. What a waste. We shall remedy that tonight, I promise you. I, um, I surmise you realize I had a most exhilarating evening. And uh, since I don't make a practice of changing in public, I really think that we should say... Au revoir. <laughs> Okay. 
Where's Harry? Upstairs. Why? I want to talk to him. We're just getting ready to go out. Out where? Dinner and dancing. It was his own idea. Kay, was there a detective here this afternoon? Yes, there was. What did he want? I don't know. I didn't ask. Maybe you should have. Where was Harry last night? Here, in his room, working. Yes, working. But not tonight. Tonight is a night for fun. You ready, Doc? Yes, Harry. Harry, I want to talk to you. Oh, not now, Fred. I have a great deal of important pleasure to attend to. But this is important, too. Oh, I'm sure whatever it is, it can wait. Well, it'll have to wait. If we don't hurry, they won't hold our reservation. We'll talk about it later when we get back. Good night, Fred. All right, I'll be waiting. That girl last night. Yes, monsieur. He was very hungry. It is not food his spirit needs, but life itself. He may kill Kay. Now he is free to come and go as he pleases. It is so simple. He borrows a body, just as he has borrowed yours. Then he savors life to the fullest. And when danger threatens him, he returns to the safety of the mirror, leaving an innocent victim to pay for his evil deeds. Well, when he comes back and lets me go, I'm going to smash that mirror. That'll finish him. Alas, the mirror cannot be broken. Why not? This is part of the spell. Only Cagliastro can destroy it. That is why the Marquis de Chardonnay covered it with paint, to foil him. You mean there's nothing that I can do? We are both helpless prisoners of the mirror. As long as we are here, we cannot even die. In the mirror. Fred! Fred, can't you hear? It's no Fred! use, Monsieur. Oh, it's not just a he cannot Fred! help you. Fred, I'm in here! Castro can Listen. help you. And only when he chooses. He can do nothing. in years. Where did you learn to dance like that? I told you I'm a new man. I like the change. I think. I'd like a drink. What about you? Can I fix you one? No, thank you. I'll have a cigarette. In my top coat pocket. Get these earrings. They're her earrings. Yeah. It's stupid of me to leave them in my pocket. I'm afraid I have to change my plans. Look at me, Kay. Look into 
my eyes. Deeply, deeply. You cannot move. You cannot speak. You cannot resist. Harry, where's my sister? Shh, shh, shh. She's asleep. She's not asleep, she's dead. You killed my sister. <laughs> I go now to meet the death. 